Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Hervé Beuglen. I'm a researcher at the Exlim laboratory at the University of Poitiers in France. And this tutorial is going to be about hacking an IoT chip with GNU Radio. To be able to do this tutorial, you will need two elements. The first one is the transmitter side. Uh, you'll need either an STM32 nuclear board plus an NRF24 module or a file uh, that uh, you can find on my GitHub. Um, it's the file nrf uh, underscore data dot bin. For the receiver side, uh, you will need either an USRP with the appropriate daughter board on the 2.4 GHz band or a cheaper Adam Pluto. If uh, uh, you go to the STM32 solution, that's what I'm going to do for this tutorial, uh, you see here that uh, I've got two boards. So the first board is an STM32 uh, nuclear board uh, with uh, a, a daughter board equipped with an NRF24 NRF uh, module and also uh, an OLED display to display the received uh, room temperature and you've got a second board which is uh, the transmitter and this transmitter is uh, going to transmit the room temperature it's an STM32 uh, uh, blue peel board that's a really cheap board with a, an extension board that I, I built especially for, for this so it transmits the temperature and it, as you can see the room temperature is uh, displaying on on uh, the, the OLED display. Of course I've put uh, all the uh, code you need for these boards on, on the GitHub but you have to know that uh, uh, to uh, uh, be able to modify the code yourself uh, you uh, have to use the ST uh, recommended tools. Uh, uh, these are presented here. Uh, I uh, use them quite uh, uh, often and uh, they are really really nice uh, and efficient tools. So the first one is the STM32 Cube MX. It's a project generator. It allows you to configure the different peripheral you find on an STM32 and, and the pins. And also uh, it allows you to configure the clock domain. At the end, it generates a project uh, which is compatible to uh, the IDE you want to work uh, with. Uh, and the uh, one that's recommended by ST is the STM32 Cube IDE that you see here and you develop of course in uh, in C or C++ for uh, these uh, uh, for these boards so we are okay with the prerequisites so uh, let's see uh, the expected outcomes um, one thing although we are not going to to detail it uh, during this tutorial is uh, that uh, I, uh, I suggest you to to be able to convert an OOT module from uh, GNU Radio 3.7 to GNU Radio 3.8. If you look at the internet, we, we see a lot of things in, uh, uh, in forums, uh, uh, people asking, uh, well, uh, I want to have the, the, this module in, in version 3.8. Um, that's not so uh, complicated to do. So I really uh, suggest you to, to, do, to do it at least once because uh, it will help you to understand all the different elements that compose an OT uh, new radio uh, module and it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, so I converted the, uh, the, the OT module we're going to use for, for this tutorial to version 3.8 so I know uh, what I am talking about. So um, uh, on this part. So the second thing we we're, we're going to do is to create um, a GRC blocks, uh, and uh, also uh, we will modify quite a lot the C++ and Python code that uh, we we going to find in uh, the OOT module we are going to use. And uh, finally, the third point that's really interesting to see. 
uh, because it's really related to packet communication with GNU Radio is the message passing interface and also the tags which are elements that allows uh, to uh, synchronize uh, with uh, events so that's also a, a nice feature so the outline of uh, this tutorial is presented here we will first start with uh, presenting some uh, IoT 2.4 GHz low rate chips uh, and then we will see the GR Nordic OOT module uh, on which we are going to, to work uh, it's been designed by Basti Research then we'll build an NRF uh, 24L01 Plus transceiver with, uh, with GNU Radio uh, and uh, finally we'll go to a conclusion so let's see the IoT 2.4 GHz low rate chips so, in fact, on the market you find uh, several solutions from different chip vendors and most of these chips uh, implement several RF protocols and they've, most of the time they've got proprietary protocols so uh, you cannot uh, really uh, uh, exchange data from one chip to another uh, except if they use uh, standardized protocols which, which uh, some of them use uh, like Zigbee or uh, Bluetooth Flow NG. So uh, they use packet communications uh, with a rate of up to 2 megabits per second and uh, to, to uh, deal with uh, packets they integrate a packet engine uh, for, for, uh, for packet handling uh, to construct the packet uh, with the header, payload etc. So here you, you see three examples. Uh, uh, on the, the left you've got uh, ST Microelectronic ST, uh, S2LP, um, which is a quite low power chip, uh, one of the lowest power uh, on the market. And uh, then you've got uh, uh, Silicon Labs also, which has a, a quite a wide range of IoT chips like uh, this one, the SI4463 and of course Nordic Semiconductor uh, with uh, here the NRF52832 um, which allows you uh, not only to use a proper proprietary protocol but also uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy, low energy. So uh, for this tutorial uh, we are going to use an old chip from Nordic Semiconductor, it's the NRF28A4L01 Plus and uh, is uh, quite well known by embedded system guys. Uh, you find a lot of projects uh, using Arduino with these chips and it, the, the, the module, the complete module uh, can be found on Chinese uh, sites for less than one euro. Uh, be careful uh, because most of the time these are not original chips, they are fake. Uh, the chip has been copied uh, using uh, an older integration technology like uh, this example shows it. So uh, some of them are not as reliable as the, the original NRF uh, chip. So you have to be careful about that. So what's inside an NRF 24L01 plus transceiver? Well, you will find, uh, and it's the case for, for not only for, for this chip, but for most chips of uh, this, uh, this range, you've got uh, the transmit part, the transmitter, including a power amplifier, and uh, a, a modulator, a digital modulator. Most of the time it's FSK, or here uh, Gaussian FSK, and also the RF chain, uh, with a low noise amp amplifier uh, plus the demodulator of course uh, then uh, if you look at uh, that's the RF part on the baseband part you've got uh, the, the so-called packet engine uh, and here it's the NN shock burst baseband engine uh, this this chip uh, communicates with a microcontroller or microprocessor using the, the SPI bus so in, in summary, uh, the main features of this uh, chip is uh, that it uses the 2.4 GHz ISM band and uh, you've got uh, the possibility to select uh, one channel over 126. Uh, it uses a GFSK modulation. Uh, the data rate uh, can be varied between 200 and 
kilobits per second to 2 megabits per second. The, the output power is also programmable from 0 to minus uh, 18 dBm. So uh, just an idea about the current consumption at uh, 0 dBm uh, you use uh, 11.3 uh, milliamps. It, it has got a, a quite nice sensitivity of minus 94 dBm uh, at 200 kilobits per second and the payload can uh, go up to uh, 32 bytes uh, with automatic packet handling uh, and as I said before uh, it uses uh, uh, for the host interface uh, a 4 pin uh, SPI port and uh, the supply range is from 1.9 to 3.6 volts so the proprietary protocol used by the chip is called the Enhanced Shock Burst Protocol and in fact it's just uh, the way the packet is constructed so it starts with a preamble which is uh, one byte long it can be uh, in hexadecimal OX55 or OXAA depending on the fact that uh, address starts with 0 or 1 then you've got the address field which can be uh, 3 or 5 bytes and then uh, there's uh, 9 bits uh, with the packet control field the packet control field uh, includes the payload length the packet ID and, uh, and uh, 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 1 bit for acknowledging or not acknowledging the, the packet for the receiver then you've got the payload which can vary from 1 to 32 bytes and uh, finally you've got also a CRC that, that is calculated uh, from the data uh, which can be 1 or 2 bytes long there are over, uh, over um, NRF chips of this, uh, this range uh, for example the NRF 24LU1 uh, which integrates the NRF 24L01 plus uh, plus an USB full speed uh, interface and a 8051 uh, microcontroller. Uh, this is found in Microsoft and Logitech keyboards and mice. Uh, these two chips are not recommended for new designs uh, uh, by uh, Nordic Semiconductor. And this is the type of dongle you see. Uh, we will talk about this dongle uh, uh, a bit uh, later, later on. So now, um, if we look at the at Nordic range uh, for this chip, you you've got the NRF52 series, which uh, has replaced uh, the NRF24. Um, in fact, it's a, it's a SOC, uh, including the RF, like the chip we saw before, but also it includes the microcontroller, which is an ARM Cortex-M4. So there, there are several uh, different chips in the, in the range, as uh, represented here in the, in the table. Uh, this RF52 uh, can still use the Nordic proprietary protocol, which is the NS Shop Burst. And the development boards uh, are really uh, affordable because uh, for for this development kit uh, as shown on the photo, you will only pay 40, uh, 40 euros. So where do we find NRF chips? Well, in uh, a lot of uh, Microsoft and Logitech wireless keyboards and mice. Um, also uh, drone remote controllers uh, like uh, the one you saw uh, you see here on the on the slide uh, sport watches bike equipment art rate monitors and things like that well so it's a really well known technology quite uh, old already uh, and so you you'll find uh, lots of resources about hacks uh, for mice drones etc um, it uses packet communication so uh, it's quite interesting to fiddle it uh, to fiddle with it uh, using GNU Radio. So that's why uh, we have the goal of this tutorial, which is to build a, a Nordic uh, NH Shop Burst compliant transceiver with GNU Radio. So at the end, we'll be able to mimic the, uh, 
the NRF24 uh, chip uh, with, with GNU radio. So either for the transmitter you use uh, an STM32 nuclear board with uh, the NRF24 brick up board um, or uh, you can use the, uh, the file I was uh, talking before uh, the NIF underscore data dot, uh, dot bin. So let's have a look about the, uh, the outer three module we are going to work on. Uh, so the first question we start with this uh, project is uh, do we have to start from nothing? Of course uh, the answer most of the time is no. But uh, in fact, there are not so many up-to-date implementations uh, to, to deal with these uh, IoT chips. Uh, some of them use uh, the old message queue way of packet transmission, like uh, the GR, GRCC1111. So uh, I came up with the GR Nordic O3 module from Bastier Research, um, which uses the GNU radio message passing interface. And it's been designed to identify vulnerabilities of wireless keyboards and mice. And this work has been presented at DEF CON uh, 24 uh, in 2016. Uh, so uh, the only work we have to do is to convert it to uh, uh, version 3.8 of GNU Radio. So the work presented at uh, uh, GR uh, at sorry at uh, DEF, uh, DEFCON 24 was uh, mouse jack injecting keystrokes into a wireless mice. So presented by Mark Newlin from uh, Basti Research. So in fact, um, uh, mouse uh, or keyboards uh, they, they've analyzed. Uh, for, for, for this work, uh, uh, the wireless mice and keyboards from 16 vendors uh, looking at proper hereditary protocols um, uh, and four families of transceivers. And they found, they found the 16 vulnerabilities uh, with case stroke uh, sniffing, uh, case stroke injection, and some of them were just unpatchable. And just a citation, a quotation from uh, Logitech in uh, 2009. Since the dis displacement of a mouse would not give any useful information to a hacker, the mouse reports are not encrypted. So well, uh, we could uh, think, can think that okay for a for a mouse, but uh, as you know, uh, most of the time uh, you've got uh, on the same. Uh, RF uh, system, you've got uh, the, uh, the mouse and the keyboard. So the peripherals, these two peripherals send uh, the information to, to a dongle, the dongle we, we, we saw before. And uh, this dongle, which is a USB HID, uh, it sends the user input to, to the computer. So in fact, an attacker can talk to your dongle, that's possible, with keystroke injection represented here, or simply eavesdrop on your unencrypted keyboard. Okay, so uh, since the keyboard is not the is not uh, the your keyboard data is not encrypted, you can get, for example, uh, uh, simply uh, a password of, of someone. If you want to know more about these uh, different attacks they've uh, they've tested, uh, you've got uh, you've got uh, the link I've put uh, here on on this slide. So now let's go with building an NIF twenty four L one plus transceiver with GNU Radio, and it's the part one of this tutorial. So let's go discover uh, GR Nordic. Uh, so, as I said before, it's been created by Basti Research and it's available on GitHub. Uh, however, there, there are no updates uh, since uh, September 2016. So it's still on uh, GNU Radio uh, version 3.7. So I forked this module and updated it to GNU Radio 3.8. Uh, and so you will find it on my GitHub. 
So you, you've got, uh, in fact, two branches, uh, version 3.7 and master, which is 3.8, and also a, a third one, uh, you have to say, is the tutorial one that you can, uh, you can use for, for the tutorial. So uh, just uh, a few words about the conversion procedure uh, from 3.7 to 3.8. Um, this is documented in uh, on, on the GNU Radio Wiki, as uh, uh, you've, you've got the link on, the, on this slide. But uh, I can tell you a, a few words about that. So when you, you are going to uh, do um, a conversion like that, uh, what is recommended by uh, GNU Radio? the GNU Radio community is to use, in fact, GR underscore mod tool. Uh, GR mod tool, in fact, uh, is going to do all the tricky uh, work about uh, uh, dependencies uh, on the different tools like Swig, etc., uh, to the right version. So what you do is simply uh, you create start with the same name, you create uh, the module and you add the different blocks using uh, GRMod2. And this is working quite well. Uh, I, I tried it so, so it worked. But there's an, a second problem that uh, for me was a bit more tricky, is the fact that uh, between the version 3.7 and 3.8 of new radio, you've got uh, a major change in the Python version. You go from Python 2.7 to uh, Python 3.8, so, and a lot of uh, uh, libraries, Python libraries, have changed uh, their names. Uh, the, some functions have been renamed, so it can be it can be really tricky, and it takes quite a certain time uh, to. Uh, to go for the change. But anyway, uh, I really advise you to do it at least once because uh, it's really interesting in the fact that uh, it will give you all the important elements you have to know when you design an OT module, the way it is architectured uh, and the way the blocks uh, are uh, communicating together and things like that. So, so try to do it at least once. So, quite easy, if you want to start with uh, GR Nordic, you just go and clone uh, the uh, repository. So, um, you can check out between the three uh, different branches uh, represented here in, uh, in red, uh, according to the version you, you want to work uh, on it. Um, then, of course, you create the build directory, you go into this directory, then you go with CMake, you go for a make and don't forget uh, to add the option hyphen J with the number of uh, thre uh, threads your uh, uh, computer can handle because uh, this is going to be uh, really uh, uh, a gain in, in time. Then you, you go with a sudo make install and a sudo ld config. So if you go now into the um, GR Nordic directory and precisely in the subdirectory lib, we'll find in fact two blocks. The first one is Nordic TX, Nordic underscore TX. Uh, and what's interesting for us, because we would like to uh, uh, create two uh, GRC blocks uh, is to see uh, the type and the size of the input and the output of the block. So what we can uh, see from the private constructor which is represented here is that the input is a Nordic tap underscore in message so it uses the uh, message uh, interface, the GNU radio message interface, uh, with PMTs that we'll see uh, afterwards. And the output is going to be a stream of uh, unsigned int uh, 8. So that's 
interesting for Nordic TX and we have got also a block called Nordic underscore Rx which is the receiver so the input is going to be a string of unsigned int uh, 8 so uh, the output is going to be a message uh, using the message uh, port interface of GNU Radio so to use these blocks in GSRC, uh, we you can just notice that uh, in fact they have not been implemented because um, the the guys from uh, Bastille uh, Research uh, used simply Python scripts and uh, they didn't really care about uh, GNU Radio companion blocks. So what we would like to do uh, now is to add these two blocks. Uh, which will use the the, the, the YAML uh, format, uh, so we will have to create these uh, two blocks and uh, verify afterwards, of course, that this implementation works in uh, GNU Radio Companion, so that you can see the blocks. To build a receiver uh, with uh, GR Nordic, um, uh, starting with our, of course, a transmitter which is either uh, the STM32 board uh, fitted with our NRF24 module or a file containing the recorded DSB packets. Uh, we uh, need to know what's going to be inside the packet, in fact, and it's rep represented here in this table. So the address length is going to be 5 bytes uh, and it's going to be OXE7 repeated 5 times. The payload size is going to be 8 bytes, the temper temperature is going to be the payload and it's going to be uh, represented in this format xx.x uh, The CRC is going to be 2 bytes and the data rate is going to be 2 megabits per second and to avoid uh, uh, the fact that uh, we could have uh, uh, jamming because of the Wi-Fi uh, the Wi-Fi uh, devices, I use the RF channel 120 which gives a, a frequency, uh, carrier frequency of 2.52 GHz. So let us first have a try with the existing uh, Python example. In the subdirectory example you've, you, you will find a file called nordic underscore receiver dot py it's a python file and as you can see it implements uh, a receiver uh, so uh, we see that the uh, sdr source for the receiver is uh, osmo sdr uh, so um, all the, the the hardware which uh, are compatible with osmo sdr implementation will work uh, but uh, it's not going, going to work with the with, with the Adam Plus Plus so well, we'll see that afterwards. And so on the left, you you've got uh, the, the the parts dealing with the, the SDR source, and after that, on the right, you've got the receive chain with the different blocks uh, which are connected to be able to uh, receive the uh, the the. the the NRF24 uh, data. So uh, GR Nordic is said to be SDR agnostic. Uh, of course, it's compatible with a, a lot of hardware which uses uh, GR Osmo SDR. But since it doesn't work with the Alan Pluto, um, I will ask you to modify Nordic Receiver uh, .py, uh, .py accordingly, and also to study Nordic Receiver. Uh, file to identify the relevant blocks and their connection because uh, by doing so we'll be able to find the right blocks after that to build um, uh, uh, a flow graph in, in GNU Radio Companion. So uh, you will also see in uh, this uh, Nordic receiver uh, file that uh, there's a function implemented called Nordic tap printer. So Nordic tap printer to to be concise uh, just does uh, something uh, 
important. It converts the uh, so-called uh, PMTs, uh, so polymorphic types, uh, in uh, uh, character uh, in strings uh, that uh, are uh, uh, then printed on the screen. So um, this is a, a function, a block. It can become a block. In fact, I would like to that it becomes a block that we could use in no radio companion. So that's the third thing I'll ask you for this first part of the tutorial is to integrate uh, the Nordic tab printer block in uh, GR Nordic uh, explicitly. So you will have to create a Python file called Nordic Blocks uh, .py and copy the code of Nordic tab printer found in Nordic receiver. Uh, file okay, so uh, you add then Nordic blocks to the module by modifying the CMake list uh, file dot txt txt and uh, also uh, double underscore init double underscore dot py. Then you create a GRC YML file for the new Nordic tab printer block, and of course after. Uh, doing all these manipulations, you will have to rebuild the module. Final uh, thing I'll ask you to do for this first part of the tutorial, and I'll let you some time to do that, uh, is to create a GRC Nordic receiver flow graph. So uh, now we are going really to the uh, new radio companion part using the new blocks uh, and the appropriate GNU radio blocks uh, you will have to design a GRC flow graph receiver so it will visualize the incoming packets and uh, I advise you to add a power squelch block and synchronize the time sync block with the squelch uh, and the underscore SOB tag so set the threshold to uh, the detection threshold to minus 35 dB uh, also study the gfsk.py uh, which is uh, located in the uh, new radio installation part of Python uh, uh, the, the, the path is indi indicated here uh, and in particular the, the gfsk mode here block so I would like you to expose the block that compose this gfsk underscore mode so okay, it's uh, your turn. It's uh, time to work. I will let you some time to work. Uh, so I've uh, just uh, summarized on this slide the four tasks you will have to work on. And you uh, can interact with me using the chat link which will be given during the conference. So don't hesitate if you've got uh, a problem to ask me, uh, I'll answer uh, in real time. See you in a few minutes.
Welcome back. I hope that everything went fine. Um, let's see the expected uh, results. So the first thing is to get accustomed to the YAML language, yet another markup language. Well, it's quite easy. As you can see, the, the tags uh, are really, uh, really clear to understand. The first thing is to the make keyword, uh, where you just uh, have to look at uh, the constructor you find in the .cc uh, uh, corresponding file. So uh, here we've got a, a variable called the channel count. So it's a parameter and you have to define its type. So then you have to add uh, the inputs and the outputs. And you have to precise the, the, precise the domain uh, they work on. And also, if you use a stream, you have to define the type. So here it's it's bytes. So it's the same for the Nordic RX block dot uh, YML with the different uh, uh, variables and parameters and the inputs and the outputs. So uh, let's see now the modification and the blocks we find in uh, the file Nordic underscore receiver dot py so the first thing to do if you want to use the pluto is to import the iio library and uh, use this uh, this line where you define the sample rate uh, the the uh, rf frequency uh, etc so you, you've got different parameters uh, which are detailed in the documentation uh, of the pluto um, uh, then if you look at uh, the uh, the connection you see that uh, the, the, the Pluto source it's at the, uh, is at the beginning of uh, of, uh, of the of the graph. Then it's, it is followed by a low pass filter, and this low pass filter is then uh, followed by a GFSK demodulator, uh, and then we go to uh, a, a Nordic uh, uh, RX uh, underscore RX, sorry, and finally a Nordic tab printer. So we've got all the the blocks we need uh, to, con to, to, to build the, 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 the flow graph in a GNU Radio compa Companion. So it gives you uh, a receiver uh, like this one. And uh, let's see now uh, uh, how this, uh, this, f this flow graph works uh, with, uh, with the hardware. So if we look at uh, Nordic underscore receiver dot py. Uh, I'm going to uh, use it uh, to uh, listen to the channel 120 and I'm going to switch on my uh, transmitter, which is the STM32, which is transmitting the uh, room temperature. So I start here and I see the packets and it works pretty well. So of course I've got my Pluto which is connected uh, on my U USB and you can see that it works pretty fine. Let's stop it and go to no radio companion. Uh, so if uh, you look at the receiver um, flow graph so you've got your pluto at the uh, input and then i've added a power squelch block with a threshold of minus 35 db so it's only going to trigger the uh, receiving chain when uh, the level the pluto gets is over a certain level so uh, the sample rate is 4 mega samples per second uh, we've got a low pass filter to uh, to filter the, 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 the input to have less noise and then normally you just use a GFSK demod block uh, which is here uh, disabled uh, because I just uh, wanted to uh, since it's a, it's a here block I wanted to um, a hierarchy, hierarchical block I wanted to uh, to see what was inside so um, I so in a, a gfsk.py a file that uh, you uh, you had three blocks in fact uh, uh, the quadrature 
demodulator which uh, performs the frequency demodulation and then you've got a clock recovery uh, block uh, using the Müller and Müller algorithm and then the binary slicer. A binary slicer is just uh, uh, it just uh, looks at the, the input uh, when the level is over zero uh, it says uh, it gives a one uh, otherwise it gives a zero. So at the input of the binary slicer you've got simply bits that's we are what we are going to see when we launch the flow graph. Uh, then of course we've got our Nordic RX block with the same parameters as the transmitter and uh, we have got uh, the output of this block going to the Nordic tab printer block we've just uh, designed. If you look in the category on the right you see that in Nordic you've got Nordic RX, Nordic TX, Nordic Tab Printer and another one that we'll see afterwards. So uh, I wanted to uh, synchronize with, the, with the, the, the bits coming from the packets so I used a correlate access code block which uh, correlates with the header of the uh, NRF24 packets so and shows the results in a on a time sync. So let's see if this works. Okay, it's, it works pretty fine as you can see. So uh, we see uh, we see on the figure that uh, we see the packets with uh, the um, header and then the data and uh, in the second uh, graph. Uh, we see the, the bits, the resulting bits after demodulation. So it works, it's working really, really, really fine. Okay, let's carry on with part two. So let's give a few words about GFSK modulation. So this is defined by this uh, equation. Uh, where you see that we've got a cosine uh, with uh, a, a carrier and a phase that uh, varies with uh, the, the data we want to transmit. So E is the bit energy, T is the symbol duration and FC is the carrier frequency. So transmitted information is, is contained in the phase, in the angle term. So uh, phi is given by this equation here, where uh, alpha i is the message uh, signal, which is here uh, plus one, minus one, representing one and zeros. So we uh, transmit uh, uh, binary data, so there's only two, there are only two possibilities. So Q of T is, uh, describes, uh, describes the shape of the phase transition whose magnitude uh, is uh, proportional to the modulation index H. So H is given by the difference between the frequency representing the transmission of a1 and F0 representing the transmission of a0. So uh, it's equal to 2 uh, multiplied by Fd by t, where fd is simply the difference between the frequency representing the 1, f1, minus the carrier frequency, which is also equal to the carrier frequency minus the frequency, uh, frequency representing the 0, f0. So now, uh, after that, we, we do some pulse shaping, and that's why uh, uh, fsk is transformed into gfsk. As you can see, uh, it allows to get rid of uh, side lobes on the spectrum, so you've got a much uh, cleaner spectrum. And that's the advantage of uh, the, the, Gaussian, uh, the Gaussian filter. This Gaussian filter is given, uh, the, the impulse response of this filter is given by the equation represented uh, on the top of the, uh, of the slide. Uh, B is the filter's minus 3 dB bandwidth, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, for GFSK, 
uh, it can be characterized by the BT product, uh, for example, in Bluetooth, uh, using this uh, Gaussian FSK, uh, BT is equal to 0.5. And here you've got an example of the uh, shape you get after passing the Gaussian filter for uh, the, the, uh, the data, binary data uh, represented um, by, by the string uh, at the top of the figure. So to build a GFSK modulator implies uh, to uh, uh, implement several uh, uh, operations. So the first thing, uh, when you've got bits uh, represented by 1 and 0, you transform them in plus 1, minus 1. Then you add the pulse uh, shaping by uh, uh, you can you just convol apply a convolution uh, between the uh, the data and the the, the, the filter is in post response. You multiply then by two by pi h. Then you integrate. Then you get of course the phase. And this you apply to uh, an IQ modulator represented here with uh, the uh, upper branch, which is the cosine part, and the lower branch is the sine, uh, just uh, the, the, the sine branch. So uh, you multiply, of course, by the carrier, uh, and you obtain, after summing uh, these two uh, branches, you, you obtain the GFSK signal. So uh, it's quite interesting to have a look uh, in gfsk.py uh, to see how it is done in GNU Radio because uh, some operations you see here are analog operations and you have to implement them, implement them sorry, digitally. So um, there are some tricks uh, about that uh, and it's quite interesting to study it. So for the demodulator, uh, most of the time, uh, it's not the only way to do it, but uh, uh, we use a phase shift discriminator represented here. Again, the uh, multiply block you see uh, just the carrier, which is um, cosine or sine uh, when you apply a phase of uh, P divided, uh, pi divided by two. So the two signals SI of T and SQ of T are, are given by the equations at the end of the slide. And what you have to do uh, after that is apply a low pass filter and apply an arc tangent operation to get uh, the phase. And if you uh, uh, use a differential, uh, differential operation a differentiation sorry operation uh, you get the message at the end so it's interesting to see also how it's done digitally by looking at uh, the same file i was uh, mentioning before gfsk.py to see how it is done in GNU radio looks uh, something like the diagram you've got at the end of the slide something uh, a bit uh, different uh, now is um, something that's working behind the scene. Uh, it's when you, you launch a, a, a reception of uh, using uh, when using the, this OOT uh, module, uh, there's, uh, there's also something that uh, produces a, a UDP uh, stream and uh, it's been implemented in Nordic uh, underscore rx uh, dot cc and uh, it uses the, the boost library just to uh, send the the data uh, decoded to a udp port which is uh, 9451 and uh, you can use the uh, network tool wireshark to uh, visualize the, the the packets uh, that you decode so it's uh, quite interesting because Wireshark uh, allows you to, to see uh, um, a lot of things uh, when uh, you want to analyze uh, uh, network, uh, network protocols. So they've uh, implemented that. Uh, so uh, I've just uh, give you here the command you have to use if you want to 
uh, to decode the, the Nordic packets, uh, ESB packets with, uh, with Wireshark, um, you have to use a Lua script, which is uh, located in uh, uh, the Wireshark uh, subdirectory uh, in uh, GR Nordic. So now uh, let's have a look on uh, the GNU radio message passing interface and uh, the uh, strange things called PMTs, polymorphic types. Uh, in the case of uh, packet transmission, uh, we, we're not really interested in data streaming. And that's the, the usual way of uh, working for, for GNU radio. So we would like to transmit asynchronous messages. In GNU radio, there are two mechanisms to pass messages synchronously uh, to a data uh, stream using stream tags or asynchronously using the message passing interface. From a programming perspective, a message can be represented as a data type. In Python, uh, this is not really a problem since it is weakly uh, typed. Uh, C++, on the other hand, is strongly typed and it's not possible to create a variable without knowing its type. So in GNU Radio, we need to exchange the same data objects between Python and C++. So uh, we use polymorphic types or PMTs. Hence, messages are PMTs and can contain anything, uh, commonly vectors of bytes for PDUs, that's uh, quite common, or a dictionary with a key-value pair. Uh, you need to understand a minimum of PMTs uh, working GNU radio, and you can have a look on the wiki, uh, where there's a page dedicated to, to them, and it explains quite well uh, how they work in GNU radio. So now we would like to uh, build a transmitter. We've got already a receiver uh, that works. So now um, the transmitter, um, the tr Nordic transmitter block, which already exists, uh, it requires a message input block. This message has to be a PMT, and the PMT will be made up of these fields. So uh, channel index, uh, channel, data rate, etc. So uh, we will use uh, this, uh, these fields. We would like to send this packet every 0.5 seconds, exactly the same way as uh, with the STM32 and the NRF24 L01 plus breakout bolt. So to build this transmitter, um, to validate the transmitter chain, uh, I'll ask you for this, this is what your first job in the second part of this tutorial is to build a TX RX loop model with GNU Radio Companion. So, uh, some tips to help you uh, use a message strobe block as input to the Nordic TX block and take care of how to write uh, the, the, the PMT and the conversion from a, PM, uh, for a, for a, from a string to a PMT. So you can have a look at line 79 of nordic underscore tx underscore empl.cc. So you, if you validate this, this step, you will see that your model, although it's complete, doesn't work. It doesn't work because there's a bug in nordic underscore tx underscore empl.cc. So find this bug, which it's quite obvious, it's, it's so stupid, but well. So after this bug, it's it's working, okay. Uh, it's, it's supposed to work. So let's build a transmitter model. You can check this model with uh, either an STM32 nuclear board, plus the NRF24 L01 plus module, or with a second Adam Pluto in, in receive mode if you want. Then we play a little bit, that's the second task I, I ask you to work on, is to add a length tag to the Nordic uh, TX block. And this can be useful to synchronize visualizations, visualization blocks. Uh, so what you have to do is simply to edit the uh, uh, .cc file for Nordic TX 
and add a tag named packet length whose value is the length of the produced packets. Uh, you can have a look on the new radio wiki to help you on how to add tag uh, to, uh, to a block. Um, you have to be careful about the packet length, uh, which should increase because of the bytes to bits conversion and the upsampling rate. So how can we do that? That's, uh, that's a good question and uh, you'll have to think about it. So get, build and install a GR4, that's our first solution. GR4 is a, an out of three uh, module uh, that is, uh, that's been designed by Bastian Blossel. And you will find something nice which will allow, uh, which will uh, avoid you to, uh, to, 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 to go and add your tag uh, in the .cc uh, uh, file. Uh, because it's got a block called burst tagger and uh, it adds automatically a tag in the stream so that you don't have to edit uh, anything so it's quite nice but another solution is also to add uh, manually start of block and end of block tags directly in the nordic uh, tx.cc uh, uh, without using a gr4 you, you've got several solutions so you can uh, try one of them or all if you if you have time and uh, finally uh, we'd like to create our nordic tab transmitter block this will allow uh, allow us to uh, directly uh, enter uh, text into this block without having to uh, fiddle with all the pmt's uh, conversion functions so a part of this block is uh, in uh, the file uh, nordic underscore channelized underscore transmitter dot py uh, it doesn't meet our needs for the radio companion because uh, there, there is no associated uh, yaml block so you have to create the associated uh, yaml block for for this uh, for this block as well um, so you can uh, write this block and add it to uh, our file nordic underscore uh, blocks dot py it's uh, it's a way to put all the, uh, the the block in in one file it's a, it's a neat way of organizing our code so you can finally add your block to the grc transmitter model you've built before and check that everything works so now uh, it's uh, your turn. Uh, it's, you've got some time to uh, to address these uh, four different tasks, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll meet again in a in a few minutes.
Welcome back. I hope that uh, everything went fine. Uh, let's have a look on the expected results. So here are my models uh, for the different validation points. So the first one is uh, the RX TX loop, and the second one is uh, the transmitter with a message strobe block. Uh, here you've got uh, uh, validation 7 where I have added uh, a burst tagger block uh, with installing the GRFU OOT uh, module and finally the Nordic Tap transmitter block added to uh, the, the transmitter. Let's have a look on how this uh, uh, things, these all these models uh, work uh, by uh, using no radio companion. So let's see the first model, which is TXRX loop. So we just have added, in fact, uh, the different block, and we do a loop with Nordic TX, Nordic RX, and uh, Nordic Tab Printer. So let's see if this works. Yes, as you can see, I've also added uh, the packet link uh, tag and the TX start of block and TX end of block uh, tags in uh, the transmitter code and you can see that uh, of course the packets are correctly decoded uh, as you can see with the with the text here okay so it's quite nice to have a synchronization uh, because you see exactly the what happens uh, with the with the packet with the different uh, tags we use here then I'll start with uh, the first uh, transmitter solution so uh, in fact we use a Pluto as a transmitter we use a GFSK modulator and of course our Nordic TX which uh, uh, starts with a message strobe and so you, you have to be really careful about uh, the way you build the PMT um, in fact uh, here if you edit this block you see that you have to use the function which is uh, PMT dot init underscore u8 vector where you have to indicate the size of your vector and uh, the name of the vector. So packet vector is just given here by this. It's a concatenation of two uh, strings, in fact, where uh, address is, of course, all the fields we need to build the, the packet. The payload is just the temperature here, which is 22.75. Uh, so let's uh, start the flow graph to see if everything works. So we are transmitting here and we uh, have to see if it's correctly received by our STM32. You can see that the temperature is 22.75 and that's correct. And if I reset, when I reset, you can see that it's no longer working. And uh, we will see why you've got this, this problem. In fact, the packet has apparently been received only once by the receiver.
So let's see now the third model where we have just added the uh, packet length burst tagger, which is our GR full uh, block. Okay, so you have to be careful about the symbol rate and the sample rate to have exactly the the right length for for this. So let's go and launch also. And as we can see again, we get twenty two dot seventy five. So this seems to be okay. And again, it's received only once. So there seems to be a problem that we have not taken into account. Let us now see uh, the final the final block, the final flow graph, sorry, and this final flow graph is uh, complete with all the different blocks we've, we've designed and uh, we are going to send a message of with the with the temperature which this time is going to be 24.75 and we send it to our real STM32 receiver. Let's go and launch this model. Okay, so let's have a look on the STM32, 24.25. That's the right temperature we see here. Okay, so this seems to, to work fine. So now what we can see is that for that model the temperature is always displayed and it doesn't work only once. So why is the reason of this behavior? That's what we are going to see now. So sometimes the packet is received, sometimes it is not. Uh, can you find why? The answer is simply in the NIF 24L01 plus datasheet. It's simply because of the PID field. So the PID field is used to detect if the a received packet is new or retransmitted. So PID prevents the PRX device from presenting the same payload more than once to the receiving host MCU. The PID field is incremented at the TX, TX side for each new packet received through the SPI. So uh, in fact, the code uh, that we found for uh, Nordic TX doesn't do that. So we have to think about incrementing this packet ID. So you just have to modify the Nordic tap transmitter block accordingly. So uh, here are two red arrows to show where you have to do this modification. So you just increment uh, modulo 4 this packet ID and then everything is going to work fine and as a, a real NIF24 chip transmitter. So I give you uh, some homework, uh, something really fine to, to do with, uh, with this uh, OOT module that you can add is to uh, build a BLE advertiser with uh, GR Nordic blocks. So um, in fact, you 
uh, are limited to 32 uh, bytes, but uh, this allows to simply uh, broadcast uh, temperature to uh, a, a BLE in advertising mode. So it's, it's possible to do that, but you have to encode uh, the data so that it's uh, compatible with the, the BLE uh, uh, standard. So that's a quite nice homework if you want to, to try it. So now let's go to uh, a, a conclusion. So, um, in fact, my background is electronics engineering and I'm not a, a computer guy. So, uh, in fact, uh, the new radio is something that uh, mixes uh, uh, computer science and also uh, something related to electronics, uh, digital electronics. So it's quite nice to, uh, to have a tool like that, uh, to have insight uh, in uh, radi radio frequency electronic devices. And uh, uh, the uh, system allows you also to uh, deal with packet communication, although it's a bit more complicated. There are several uh, out of three implementations uh, available for uh, packet communication, uh, burst uh, communication. Uh, they were uh, GR burst or GR event stream uh, by, by Team Oshi, but it's no longer maintained. So the successor are the OOTs from Sandia Labs, uh, for, uh, for example, GRPD utils and GLDR timing utils. And they, these are quite nice to uh, to deal with uh, with uh, with packets. So think also about one thing uh, important, GR Nordic, we played a, a lot uh, uh, with it. It's up upgradable quite easily to all type of IoT chips. I could have used um, a chip from uh, ST. Uh, I just uh, had to adapt the packet engine part. So uh, there's a code called uh, an NH shock burst packet. Uh, you just have to change this code and the rest of the code, the TX and the RX, is, is about the same. So it's quite easy to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to implement uh, other, other type of uh, IoT chips. Here are some references uh, that will give you some uh, uh, interesting uh, details about uh, some points we have uh, seen in this tutorial. I thank you very much for your attention and I uh, hope that this tutorial uh, uh, you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. <laughs>